Alright guys, time to cry back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Another day, another dashy on the thumbnail, but for very good reason. Responding to criticism about his playstyle as of late, but also calling out Ben J Naseem off the flank, saying he pretty much does not know anything about Call of Duty. Don't know why people listen to him. Very much intrigued to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, hitting the like button is the best thing you can do to help this channel reach more people. Please consider subscribing as well if you have not yet already. Firstly, this in the Optic Texas size. Thought it was kind of funny. Season 1 of Vagon is upon us. Time to choose your operator, you got Banana Cop, you got Link C, you've got Bruce, and then you've got the Pope, of course, right here, ready to go, the Optic team for next season, but there's plenty else going on with them right now, as we will discuss today. Firstly, this from Classic, so many great players who have done many things throughout the CWL era, then into the CDL, really, finding themselves in challenges now, Methods, of course, down there, who knows really what's going on with this 12th spot, but um, Methods may not even compete in that if he doesn't get, a, of course, a spot in the league for next year, but Classic, Assault, Shawnee, and Exceed, that's going to be a challenges team for next season, hopefully they can compete, I'm sure some of these guys I'd like to see them back in the Pro League at some point. Hopefully when expansion comes in, they can give themselves the opportunity if they grind out this next year and maybe the year after as well, down on the challenger side. But um, it's difficult to do so, but betting on yourself, it's always admirable to see, no doubt. This also for Masties. Shotzi first round, the game is getting reprepared. Thought this is hilarious. I don't understand exactly how this happens, but the dogs in this game are ridiculous. I mean, look at this. Arcee's caught in the dogs, and it just flies across between the buildings on Dubiat. I mean, look at this thing. It's flying. It goes across from this one straight to this one. I don't know who coded this stuff, but um, the dogs do some crazy things in this game. But uh, yeah, Arceus was certainly getting prepared for Shotzi, and Shotzi thought it was kind of funny. And uh, I don't know what happens in the game with the dogs. They're honestly just insane. I've never seen this type of stuff before in a Call of Duty game with dogs, and they've been in Call of Duty for many a year. This also from LA Thieves thought was kind of interesting, right? Because the game fuel cards we talked about yesterday have, have come out, and um, as you can see, only two of them are on the starting team currently, which does make sense given you've got Octane and you've got Envoy over there now that weren't on the team last year when I imagine he was, these were getting signed and ready to go. But you do have Rated and Tommy. So um, I thought, you know, Envoy's reply is there's something I need to know. Cabby's already making moves, right? He's working his magic early on here in the season before that, well, before everything even kicks off. But Rated certainly wants to return to professional play. And um, Tommy maybe does as well. I'm not really sure. It is going to be interesting, though, exactly what happens to a guy like Rated. Because, um, of course, he's still signed to 100 Thieves as a Warzone creator. And if he wants to compete in challenges, does that mean that LA Thieves are kind of going to do some sort of academy team or what's going on there, whether it's completely separate? I don't really know. I guess they would have first rights if they wanted to sign him as like a substitute or something so it could be kind of interesting to keep your eyes on going forwards. This also from the Crimson I thought was kind of funny. Optic Texas, Optic Warzone Media Day so the boys getting ready to go you know of course Z-Lane uh, joining the team recently and as Crimson says I once liked all of you now I hate all of you. Of course Crimson is now finding himself no longer part of the team and as he said a few days ago on the flank of course this is kind of tongue in cheek he said a few days ago that um yeah you know, like basically when he leaves the team or like he gets dropped or whatever the case may be just his his competitive mentality means that like you know he puts those guys to one side he focuses on his own, and that's certainly what they're doing over at the New York Subliners at the present time. This also from RC's released the third game mode at Cod League. He says, we told Shotzi should be out soon. So yeah, okay, now I'm actually saying it, right? So maybe Shotzi knows what the third game mode is going to be. I'm not sure. I'm sure like, um, well, whatever third game mode actually gets added to the game, whether it is CTF, which is rumored to be coming quite soon, or Control or whatever, the pros are going to try it. So they're going to see, does it work for the third game mode and see how that goes. Maybe Shotzi has an inkling. If I'm sure if he knows and has an inkling what it's going to be, then um, probably we will know before the Cod League officially announces it. But um, still, it's a bit of a question mark right now in the scene, especially because uh, there are a lot of concerns really about this current game we'll talk about later today. But also some concerns recently about uh, Dashi's playstyle, right? have certainly been raised, and he has some responses to that we'll have a look at here in a second. But firstly from Formal, finally downloaded Vanguard. He was playing it a little bit with Nature on stream last night and actually went on to say, for pretty much the first time, like I think this had been kind of hinted at, but um, never officially stated, that he does want to return to competing in Halo, at least for a short period of time. There's, a, I'm pretty sure, a Raleigh event, HGS Raleigh, in December sometime, when the game is meant to launch. I don't know if Halo's actually getting delayed again, because I saw some people were talking about that. Hopefully that's not the case. But um, anyway, like apparently the game's coming out in December, and then Formal wants to play this first event on the Halo game in December, and who knows whether that means a return to competing, because that's kind of what he said. Like He was fed up of scrimming and this type of stuff, but um, returning to competing on kind of a more casual level, I don't know, maybe that can re-spark his drive in a sense, and um, get him back into Halo competitive, and also maybe Call of Duty competitive down the line. Who knows? But um, he does go on to say, effectively, yeah, I hadn't really said this before, but I do plan to compete next year in Halo, which is um, an exciting prospect, right? I'm pretty sure Envy already have a Halo team. It's so not sure exactly what that would mean with the Optic Envy merger going on, but um, I'm sure they can find out a way to make it work. Are you gonna, are you gonna play Infinite? Uh, yeah. yeah. Are you gonna compete? Uh, yeah. You are her? I think so. 
I might try the first one though. I'm pretty sure it's like five days after the, the, when the game release, so we have a chance to that. That's sick. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Did you announce that at all? Uh, I guess I just... <laughs> I really like an ammo. Fair enough, bro. I just got a... Nate shot formal exclusive. Oh, baby. That's getting clipped. So of course the last few days there's been a fair bit of talk about Dashi and this Optic team, right? Because we talked about the Rambo clip that came out yesterday. He of course knows Scum, but everyone knows Scum for what he does and like what you know how he likes to play the game, what he can bring to the team. Rambo, of course, very well tuned into what shots he nearly bring to a team being with them as their coach for the last couple of years. Dashi's a bit of a, a question mark, really, because we know that Dashi has great numbers, like he puts up great stats and looks phenomenal. Like we know as an individual player, he's absolutely phenomenal. I don't want to like feel like I'm bashing on him too much because we know how good Dashi can be. But um just the results don't necessarily match up with the individual performances and therefore people are understandably really asking the questions okay like is Dashi playing the game wrong and I think Dashi makes some fair points in this clip that it's like well people say I'm playing the game wrong some people say I'm ego challenged too much and I'm playing too aggressive other people saying I'm playing too slow and I'm baiting so which is it right like you can't be both right which um, is certainly an interesting take but after kind of um, you know, responding to some of the criticisms about his gameplay and like his style and this type of stuff then um, well he goes on to talk about the co-host Ben that of course has raised some of these topics on the flank and I'm um, saying yeah yeah why do people even listen to this guy he's got no idea what he's talking about it's like bro you know how my rep is like dude like he just he's got to stop ego challenging but like my rep is also that i'm slow baiting i'm like what is it am i slow am i baiting am i ego challenging too much like what is it like you know what i'm saying i was like what are these like i feel like they're like yeah he's like playing a little too slow and he's uh just holding preams you know and but then the other people are like he's ego challenging too much it's like what the f is it Dude, that was actually funny as I saw that. Oh, oh, Ben Jane this seems the leader of that? Yeah, because people are convinced this guy knows anything about COD. Has this guy ever spawned in on a map? I'm not even trolling. Has this guy spawned in? Why are people thinking this guy is like analytics and shit? Like, what this guy is looking at numbers and shit? It's like, yeah, clearly he knows he has shown. He just hasn't played with the team, you know? It's just like, it's like a record of events. <laughs> yeah. Yo, wait, sure, I saw another thing. I gotta say this because I'm hearing a lot of fugues on that show, bro. A lot of fugues. It's often by one guy, and people are actually thinking this guy knows anything about COD. How is this guy finessing you guys? This guy doesn't know shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why he's left. You know, just lacking, you know, fundamentals, and you know, it's just obviously like, you know, if you're looking to be things, you know, like, I'm like, are people like, yeah, you're right. This guy knows everything. What credibility does this guy have to comment on anyone's play? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah? So Ben has a good time about it on the timeline, some good entertainment on Twitch tonight, and he was certainly catching some daggers on the timeline, right? And you know, Ben, he was former analyst for the FaZe team, and uh, you know, I think he makes a very interesting take. So right? at the end of the day, the flank without Ben would be nowhere near as good as it is. He provides a great contrast to Zuma's kind of a, like crazy energy, and um, just like he's a perfect, well, compliment in a way. Like uh, the opposites between the two of them really make the show work very well indeed. And he's not afraid to like make a, make a pretty hot take and stand by an opinion, which is great for the show. And the same time like you know has he competed at a very high pro level no and it's the same for people like myself right like obviously we can make comments and stuff like this we're never going to know the game as well as the pro players do but it doesn't necessarily mean that the things that ben says and the things that maybe i say at times and other people that haven't played the game at a professional level can't make you know can't make sense right like sometimes the pros say stuff that you're like you know what do you even mean by that just because you're a pro doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be right all the time but clearly dashi isn't particularly happy about these things that ben is saying because obviously as a re relatively respected member of the scene if, if ben makes a take or something people listen to it. okay i think maybe that makes a better sense and um they were you know ben's on every single show not all the pros are on every single social there's not always too much opportunity for pros to respond to this type of stuff it's certainly an interesting conversation to be had but um you know just a little bit of drama on the timeline you can't go wrong with that to be honest in the call of duty scene you love to see it this also i thought was kind of funny from zoom and i see i'll be right here this also in reply from zed i might have to chuck this on the thumbnail just because it's kind of funny like uh, you know <laughs> ben versus dashi the boxing match you know the, the undercard i suppose to crim six versus Mir or maybe this is the main event running Crimson versus Myth is the other card. I don't know exactly what happens there. But um, yeah, maybe we'll get some quad boxing event co coming soon. It'd honestly be hilarious to see. And uh, well, these two guys in the ring, I don't know who to favor exactly. Myth is just kind of having a difficult time figuring out who wins in a physical altercation, Dashi or Ben Jane Asim. I mean, I'm probably going to say Dashi, but I don't know. Ben might have some fight in him, man. It's, it's tough to say about this guy. Like, um, he seems to always surprise people. So this is no doubt very entertaining. Of course, the Dashi question, though, is a very interesting one to me. You can see that the stats here, at least, 
least for this past season from the Lion Man cards are, um, you know, once again, pretty nice indeed. But, um, you know, I think at the end of the day, like, this is a this is just a big year for Dashi, right? A lot of comments are made about him and the way he plays the game and, like, as, as he says, like, does he go chill too much? Does he not play by the book? As Rambo was kind of talking about yesterday that he wants Dashi to play a bit more by the book this year. Like, um, does that mean ego chilling less? Does that mean playing, you know, more aggressive at times and baiting less? I don't know. It, as Dashi says, it's kind of tough for it to be both issues at the same time. But it must be said, this is a big year for Dashi to prove, I guess, to some people that he can be a winning player. He, of course, did win an event in CWL Vegas way back in 2018 now when the Tempest was crazy good and he was ridiculously good at that event. One of the best individual performances we've ever seen at a Call of Duty event. But um, and was, of course, MVP for that time. But since then, despite having some decent teams and um, last year, of course, you'd say it was a pretty good team as well. Like, um, the results obviously haven't been there. And this year, probably is the best team he's had in a very long time. Scump, Shotzi and Illy, like, the team is nasty on paper with Dashi alongside it. If this team doesn't win, like, questions are seriously going to be raised, right, about, um, you know, especially, I think, the, the question mark is around Dashi for this coming season on kind of the work ethic side and also on the play style side, as we've been talking about the last couple of days. So I think, um, you know, Dashi certainly makes some fair points and he's an incredibly talented player, but uh, he's certainly going to have to shut some people up and prove people wrong this season. I think we'd all like to see it if that happens. So I'm very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hitting the like button tells the YouTube gods this is a good video. I looks like you should see it as well. And upgrade the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. Oh my gosh. Yo, bro, dude, Brandon's hilarious. Yo, chat. <laughs> yo, bro. Brandon literally does this. Let me, yo, give me, let me try to give my brand, my brand impression. Oh my gosh, bro. Oh my gosh, bro. It's literally Brandon. He like, he does like the, the gestures and everything. Bro. Oh my god. Oh my god, what's going on? Oh my god, these guys are, oh my god. Oh my god, bro.